No Man's Sky is a game that's received dozens of updates and patches over six years since launch, often containing hundreds of features and improvements in a single update. No Man's Sky is filled to the brim with obscure features and gameplay opportunities. I previously covered six obscure features in this video that you can see on screen now, which I encourage you to check out later if you haven't already. But in this video, I'm talking about secret features. What's the difference between a secret feature and an obscure one you ask? Well, an obscure feature was probably mentioned at the bottom of the patch notes in July 2018 and most people either didn't read it or by now have forgotten about it, so it's become obscure. A secret feature though isn't included in the patch notes or feature list, but is nonetheless an intentional part of the game. And that intentional part is important as I won't be including glitches or unintended exploits, just features that Hello Games forgot or chose not to mention themselves. I can't promise they'll all be useful, but they should all at least be interesting. Howdy, I'm Kanaju, and these are 5 secret features of No Man's Sky. Be sure to stick around too until the end since number 1 is actually my favorite. So number 5, trade routes, or trade routes depending on how you want to pronounce it. Now before you say it, I know, they were technically referenced in the patch notes for the October 3rd 2017 patch 1.38. We all remember that, but since they don't directly explain it, I'll maintain that this still qualifies as a secret feature. So this is a feature that's been in the game since release, and it still functions to this day. Have you ever noticed those lines crisscrossing the space between planets? They're pretty faint, so I don't even know if they'll show up once uh, YouTube's done compressing this video, but if you can see them, they look like 2D lines, real thin, but they're actually 3D paths snaking through space. Now these trade routes connect various planets to the space station and to each other in some cases. Back in the day, if you were role playing a pirate, you could ambush lone starships traveling along these interplanetary trade routes. Besides originally serving as pathfinding for NPC starships though, they actually serve another purpose. You see, if you have the patience, and I guess a lot of time to kill, you can actually follow them yourself. Full disclosure, the first one I followed for this video led straight into the ocean, so there was nothing there, but that's, that's an exception, not the rule. You see, if you follow one of these routes onto a planet's surface, then you'll find a trade post at the end of the rainbow. Before the economy scanner, star charts were added to the game, this was a pretty reliable way to locate trading posts. Today, it's 100% obsolete, but it's still cool nonetheless. It's like a peek behind the structure of the game's economy that I would bet most players aren't even aware of. Number four, real-time frigates. Everyone knows how frigate expeditions work. You send a handful of frigates out on a real-time expedition. Eight to 48 hours later, they return to your capital ship with a debrief of their misadventures and hopefully some loot. It's a fun side activity, especially for those looking to make some passive income. From the player's perspective, the frigates just leave the system and they return when the mission's complete. Many players might even think that they just disappear until the timer runs down, which makes sense. But that's actually not the case. In fact, your frigates are actually traveling between systems in real time. So when you get a notification that your fleet has reached a certain star system, you can actually pull up your galactic map and see it indicated. Now you're probably thinking this isn't that secret. Obviously, we've all seen those markers on the galactic map. Fair enough. But did you also know that you can find your frigates in those indicated systems? That's right. Your actual frigates can be found and boarded mid-expedition. In fact, if you find out one of them's been damaged, instead of recalling it, you can just rush to its aid and make the repairs yourself. It even works with special frigates such as the Leviathan or the Normandy. Of course, you can't board those frigates, but it's really cool to see them floating out in space all on their own. If you're looking to do this yourself, I don't believe there's any kind of marker to indicate that they're there, but when you initially warp in your space station or in, even in an uncharted system, they should be almost within eyesight if you just look around long enough. They're going to be really small, but once you see them, you'll know them. This is one of my favorite bonus features since it's so cool to actually see parts of your fleet, you know, separated, doing things in real time and knowing that, you know, those are your frigates. They're, they're not just like randomly generated. So it's a pretty cool treat. 
and the next time you send an expedition out, why not give it a shot, right? See if you can find them. It's actually kind of fun. All right, number three, freighter bridge customization. Now everyone knows you can customize your freighter from bow to stern, inside and out to a limited extent, but not many people know that you can also customize the bridge. You can add posters, plants, and practically anything else you could normally build on your freighter. That includes your base NPCs. So if you really wanted to fill out your bridge with interactive crew members, well, you can. I personally added these statues back in 2018, as seen in this vintage tweet. I added the trees later, but you may not be able to place objects on the lower bridge nowadays. Still, it's a cool feature that I don't see too many players taking advantage of probably because it isn't explicitly stated that you can. Number two, the melee boost. <laughs> now I'm not kidding, seriously. I know the majority of you wouldn't dream of exploring a planet without this move, so it probably shouldn't count as a secret feature. However, if you think back to when you first started playing, whenever that was, it's never tutorialized or mentioned in any of the game's documentation. You either figured it out by accident or you learned it from someone else, you know, either a friend or through a video. So while it may have started out as a glitch of sorts, with the next update came player models and with those an actual animation for the action. So this marked it as an officially supported feature. Over the years it's disappeared briefly a couple of times due to, you know, patches gone wrong, but it always returns. And in case you're a new player who isn't familiar with this move, it's pretty simple to pull off. Just activate your jetpack immediately after initiating a melee strike. The forward momentum, it'll throw you forward much faster than sprinting ever could. You combine that with this deuterium rich plant in a superheated rainstorm and you'll never have to walk again. <laughs> so even though it's pretty common knowledge among most players, I would still say this is one of the coolest quote unquote secret features of the game. But finally, we're here at number one, Nightless Worlds. This is probably my favorite secret feature in the game. As you can see from this screenshot, I actually discovered the planet where this takes place over three years ago. I've been meaning to make a video since then, but I was too afraid to record voiceovers back then, so I never did. Until now. So if you're looking at this footage, you're probably wondering what the big deal is. It just looks like a regular, beautiful planet. However, if you look at the time in the analysis visor, it's midnight. I spent an entire 24 hour cycle on this planet, and it never gets any darker than sunset. You might be thinking this is some sort of bug or something, but it's actually the game functioning as intended. You see, because the planet's day-night cycles are based on the position of the sun relative to the surface, planets with certain tilts can experience variations in this day-night cycle. This is similar to how the area around our own planet's poles experience periods of prolonged day and night. So it's actually a lot more realistic than you'd think. How come most players haven't discovered this though? Well, I have a theory that most players tend to land nearer to the equator of planets and thus rarely ever create the criteria necessary for this to take place. You marry that with the fact that most players don't spend enough time on most planets to notice variations in day and night. And you can see why most people have probably never experienced this, or at least never been aware of it, let alone heard of it. So a few more interesting notes about this phenomenon because I think it's fascinating. Instead of the sun traveling across the sky overhead like you would expect, it instead travels along the horizon at all times. So it sort of, you know, rotates around you. It dips below the horizon just enough to create some beautiful twilight lighting, but it never goes like too far up or too far down, pretty much stays right on the horizon. Because of this, if you were to build a sundial, its shadows would clearly rotate around it. I know this because I uh, tested it three years ago. <laughs> but lastly, since it's always day on this part of the planet, it can be assumed, although I haven't tested this, it can be assumed that it's always night on the opposite side. So for builders looking for specific lighting conditions, this could be invaluable. Imagine a cyberpunk city where it's always night, or a temple that plays with the shadows all day. So while I always encourage y'all to go out and explore the universe for yourself, if you'd like to see this phenomenon right now, these are the glyphs you'll need to enter into the portal. 
The planetary coordinates are also on screen to the specific area you'll need to be to experience this. And with that ends my list of five secret No Man's Sky features. Which one was your favorite? Any of them catch you by surprise? Any that I missed? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. There were a few that didn't make the cut for this video, so I'm curious to see if anyone would have guessed them. And hey, if you've watched this long, liking this video lets me know you enjoyed it, and it also lets YouTube know someone else might enjoy it. Last plug, of course, if you're thinking about subscribing, I publish new videos every week. Right now, my plan is to publish a new No Man's Sky video every Friday, and if time allows, I would also like to publish a bonus video each week. This might be another No Man's Sky video, could be an episode of one of my other series like Spelunking in Space, or it could be a video covering other games that I'm near equally obsessed with, if you can believe it. So if a free No Man's Sky video every week sounds good to you, subscribing is the easiest way to get it. In closing, thanks for all the support recently. From the bottom of my heart, these videos are only successful thanks to all of y'all, so yes, including you who's watching this right now, so thank you. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.